Oh my god. Th that went down really fast. I think my audio is like jacking your audio. <laughs> and I just noticed, <laughs> oh dude, oh this is hilarious. I have my chroma key like way off and like it's chroma keying my teeth out. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thrilled. It's actually pretty scary, especially with the background I got going on here. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, I need to fix this and I'll, I'll fix it. But internet, welcome to the OOTPC number 015. And I, we have on our background 014. Oh my goodness. Live production, ladies and gentlemen. This is how it goes. <laughs> Let me edit this. Oh, man. We are pro. Pro mode. <laughs> this is like mm. flat out pro mode. Oh, geez. Dude, this is terrible. But, you know, that it, terrible in the good, bad internet sort of way. Right, uh, exactly. So, like, let me figure out what's got my teeth chroma keyed out here. There it is. Okay, I, I think I fixed it. So, all right. We're a band. <laughs> Defense, we don't know anything about this Twitch thing <laughs> or podcast as evidenced by our complete lack of professionalism and anything we've done until this point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's just, uh, that's that's what you get. You, you got to love us at our worst. Uh, n n we're always at our worst. <laughs> so. I, I don't know about that. I mean, I think sometimes <laughs> we do things that are good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's that. <laughs> right, right. So, um introductions i am the game mage i'm being joined virtually across the internet through the inner tubes over the twitchlers over amazon because they bought twitch uh bye yeah yeah mike the hammer cake Klazinski. hello mike how are you doing tonight hello game mage um i am lovely awesome. i'm not stressed out about my technology this time <laughs> it's uh, me it's just me this time <laughs> I am completely at peace and completely calm right now with my technology. Brother, I need I need to know your ways. Um. <laughs> um, well, it took me several times. I mean, you're doing all the hard stuff right now. All I did was fade out the intro. So I mean, uh, there's that. Uh, so back to you're talking about you didn't you didn't know Amazon bought Twitch? They did that a while. I did not know that. Oh yeah, I think it was like it may have been last year. Maybe it was 2014, but definitely uh, six plus months ago. Mm. Yeah. I wasn't really paying attention. There was like a bidding war. Google was going to buy them, right? That's why. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I do remember that happening. Okay. Yeah. It's all coming back to me. Yep. It all comes together in the end. And you know what? I just realized that I do not have our topic list up in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. <laughs> like the true professional that I am, uh, I have no idea what we're talking about tonight. So I'm going to just stall here and act like I know what I'm doing while I bring up the website and click on the incredibly wrong board inside of Trello and bring up my work list. Let me go back and find the podcast here. There it is. Okay, so I know what we're talking about now. Yes, yes. We're talking about a few different things, but um, we should. are we going to begin with our perennial, and by perennial I mean bi-weekly topic of what we're playing? I, I think that sounds excellent. Awesome. So, would you like to go first? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before this. Oh. oh. Actually, let's do this first, then we'll do the thing that I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Roll it. Continue. Roll the beautiful bean footage. <laughs> no, go ahead. What, what are you playing? Oh, okay. So, um, so, I think I mentioned this, like, the last time I was streaming or we were streaming or somebody was doing something somewhere on the internet. Somebody accidentally uh, hit a button and put our faces on the internet where while, we, while we were trying to play some private game or something. Yes, that. <laughs> um, that I am moving, so I'm going to be moving oh, yeah. my, my residence uh, about five minutes up the road. <laughs> <laughs> um, long story short, because my landlords are... It's just a cluster of douches that is happening to me. I think you just um, uh, coined a new term. A cluster, a cluster douche. Cluster douche. douche. A cl cluster douche. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to be moving. Uh, so I'm in the process of packing. Uh, side note, worst thing in the world about being a game collector is moving. Oh, uh, oh man, I totally forgot you got to move all that junk. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, I don't like junk. I don't mean junk. I mean, you know, awesome stuff. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, uh, and all that stuff is, of course, in alphabetical order and oh, yeah. categorized by console and all kinds of junk, and so everything has to be packed a certain way. And well, it's just, just take super high resolution resolution pictures of everything. Yeah, and I did do that actually, and I, I did nice. not 
one of my previous times moving, I did not do that, and it was oh. a freaking nightmare setting it oh, all back. Oh man! <laughs> uh, but yeah, I did do that this time. I un- unfortunately, well, I-, I guess it's a good thing, and also a very like terrible thing that I've moved enough times recently to uh, I'm moving this thing. But um, but yeah, so been packing. Uh, haven't had a whole lot of time to play games. So usually I play a console game and I play a mobile game. So pretty much over the past couple of weeks, I've just been playing a mobile game. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing uh, Mega Man Zero for the... It's actually... It was originally for the Game Boy Advance. I have it, the collection for D, for DS that has all four of them in it. Um, Wait a second. All four of what? The Mega Man Zero games. Okay. I, so this is a whole new subseries, or a, a subseries is completely new to me. I know... I know Mega Man, I know the X series, I know like Battle Network, and that's like it. Yeah, yeah so so this one, um, I had played this a while ago, and honestly, I, I never really, I mean, the Game Boy Advance has a sweet library. Like, just now digging into it over the past few months, it has a sweet library, oh, and yeah. I'm very sad. I don't know what the F I was doing <laughs> at that point in time in my life, but I did not have one, you know, when it was... In its uh, in its prime time, so uh, just over the past like maybe half a year or so, I've been kind of digging into Game Boy Advance games. But uh, yeah. so I played this several years ago on my DS because the original the DS Lite could play uh, Game Boy Advance games, and I downloaded it. I downloaded a uh, you know extended um, evaluation copy sure. of it. Sure. Um, so I started playing it, and it was it was strange. Like it starts off, and it's like, okay, this feels like an X game, and then got a little further into it. And I was like, okay, this is very strange, and then I stopped playing it. So whatever. <laughs> uh, so I decided I was going to pick it back up recently, and um, started playing it, and uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it's it's kind of a fresh take on the X series. So it's kind of like it takes a lot of elements from the X series and just kind of does some different things with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so plot wise, I was actually, it's actually interesting. Like there's actually interest. It's not, just, <laughs> you, you know, it like Mario is like, okay, there's a bad guy doing a bad thing. And so you're the good guy. So you're going to go stop the bad guy from doing the bad right. thing. And then, Oh, you've beaten the game. You win. That's the story. Right. Uh, and you know, I mean, all the Mega Man games are pretty much like that. Sure. Um, like sometimes there's stuff in the manual, but um, well, and, and there's there's always the subtext of, uh, you know, how did society get to the point where, or you know, AI rampant AI, you know, AI doing bad things, and then you know people manipulate, you know, all the subtext, but nothing that's explicit. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so this is a little more explicit with with the plot. Um, oh, that's cool. So it. It takes place a hundred years after the X series, uh, kind of similar to how the X series takes place ever so many years after the original series. Right, right. Uh, and so, hundred years after X series, uh, Zero was put into stasis lock at some point. Um, yeah, after the X series, <laughs> you know, that's one of those. It happened. Believe right. in it. Uh, so <laughs> we must explain why this character is here at this point. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Zero and stasis. Uh, and so apparently in that 100 years, there was like this huge energy crisis and um, X becomes, he, he wants to uh, kill all the Reploids in an effort to, I guess, I, I don't, there are different elements of this that are revealed throughout the four games and I don't really know all the little details, I just know like random pieces of information. Mm-hmm. Um, and so basically the gist of it is that X is the bad guy in this. That's crazy. Um, and so he has uh, basically declared genocide on all the Reploids in an effort to save energy because of this energy crisis. <laughs> and so, yeah, so um, Zero is revived to stop X. And um, so, yeah, that, that's that's kind of the, the wow. plot. Uh, well, that's uh, in- interesting, at least. It's, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. And when I first found out that X was the bad guy I was like whoa what what, what? <laughs> <laughs> um it's like the other two series are for nothing <laughs> right exactly um 
apparently I, I don't then the little little pieces have been revealed apparently it's like a pirated copy of x or something and then x like s- the spirit of x is like some like freaking obi-wan kenobi ghost or something <laughs> it's just like just a bunch of stuff like that but uh so yeah the plot's actually interesting they're interesting thing, things that happen it's kind of um there's a lot a lot of kind of text it's almost like action rpg ish oh wow uh, and so that being said, you can uh, actually get different weapons in the game. Not like in previous Mega Man games, where it was like, oh, I have, I can shoot fireballs. Oh, I can shoot electricity balls, yeah. or you know, whatever. It's like you actually literally get different weapons. Um, and so the game kind of feels like uh, X and Zero combined because you can equip like a Buster, like a gun or something, to go pew pew. Yeah. Um, do like the range stuff, and then you also like have zeros, uh, the Z saber to mm-hmm. do, uh, you know, like close combat kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool because you can. It's basically like you're playing as Mega Man and Zero. Uh, wow. That's kind of you swap between the two different ways of playing. So that that's that's pretty cool. Um, and then you know you get different weapons as you go along, and you can equip those and level them up, and and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, the one thing that is kind of strange about it that kind of threw me off was uh, the missions in the game, and apparently they've taken this out uh, in moving forward. But in the in the first Mega Man Zero game, um, you you play these different missions, and they have actually like literally have objectives in them, mm. and so you might have to collect five bombs along the way while you're going through the level, which mm. isn't as like you know, like treasure hunting as it sounds. Yeah. But, um, but so you, you have to like have some kind, you have some kind of objective while you're playing through the level. So that's, that it's kind of weird at first, but then you get used to it. It's like, Oh, okay. That's yeah. Yeah. Like what I'm doing this level. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of, I feel about it kind of like how I felt about Majora's mask. How, like when you first play Majora's mask, you're thinking, Oh, Ocarina of time too. And then, it's just like not that it's like this feels kind of like Ocarina of Time, but there's like a bunch of weird different stuff, and I don't like it. <laughs> and so you don't have to play it. Yeah. And so it, it's kind of it feels like that as far as like you start playing as like this feels like an X game. It's like oh wait no it doesn't. This is weird. Something's wrong. I don't want it. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I actually beat it today, so I'll be starting on the second one pretty soon. Sweet. So any so, yeah. resolution to the the plot there, or is it kind of like oh you can need to play the next one? You you pretty much you find out that um, yeah you need to play the next one. It's kind of <laughs> stops at a cliffhanger, but uh, oh. you find out that X is it's like a pirated copy of X, and that the real X is like a Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> oh okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of deal. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah. Awesome. So what are you playing? So, uh, before that, I, I have a pertinent question to ask you. Yes. Where are you at on Silent Hill Shattered Memories? Um, let's see. The last thing I did, I was wandering around. <laughs> I'm not much further than I was when I oh, okay. was time we did it. I'm wandering around in the, uh, the courtyard of the school. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, and that's about the time I had to start packing my junk up right um so yeah that's kind of on hold for a little bit that but, uh, sucks oh man yeah i know i know you're never gonna beat that game <laughs> I, I i'm gonna beat it bro i'm so gonna beat that game it's unreal awesome well so for me um honestly it's been like mostly rocket league um like <laughs> yeah I, <saw> this. <laughs> I turned on fallout 4 for like 15 minutes the other day but i just yeah. wasn't feeling it um plus i did something that one of my companions that i'm trying to really get on their good side didn't like and that bummed me out more than it should have um mm. because i didn't really want to do what i was going to do and then i did it and then it was like oh, man i knew i shouldn't have done that but i mean it's not like it was that big of a deal but it's just whenever i see so and so dislike that i'm like oh jeez and yeah <laughs> right uh so and I can't speak anything about what I did or didn't do because <laughs> you, you've still not started it, right? Uh, 
I have started it, but okay. uh, I put it on hold to do the Silent Hill thing, and now that's on hold. And so my whole console life is on hold right now, man. Unfortunately, yeah. So, um, yeah, nothing really much there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I don't think I've really played a whole lot else. No, it's mainly been Rocket League. I started playing ranked and uh, you know competitive in Rocket League. And mm -hmm. it's a better experience, I think, in my opinion. If if you're like trying to get good or wanting to be good at the game, um, yeah, it's definitely a better experience. Um, I'm not that good, but there are <laughs> many levels below me, so that that makes me feel at least okay. <laughs> well, at least you didn't like freaking spike it into the uh, the opposing goal several times like I did. Oh, but I have done that many many times. <laughs> That's how you. That's how I got to where I'm at, and not to say that I'm actually anywhere, but um, it, man, it's a. I, I keep saying it, but it is an amazing game. I've I've not played a game that's grabbed me like this in a long, long, long time. Um, yep. So it's. I know that feel. I mean, when we were streaming the other night, we did it for like an hour and a half, and it felt like twenty minutes. I, I didn't realize we'd gone that long until I, after the fact that I saw it. I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> right. The, it's it's so addictive like you oh yep. man and and the thing is the matches are just the right length where they're long enough that if you get really behind you can come back and win but they're short enough such that you aren't in a game too long if you're like way behind or if you you know you want to iterate and play another game play another one it i mean you could play a handful of games in half an hour and so it's yeah. man it's it's a well designed well crafted game and it's so much fun so so much fun um but yeah, I've been playing that mainly. Um, I I actually haven't been playing much Resident Evil 2 lately, like speedrunning and stuff, which is bumming me out to a degree. But I just work's been knocking me silly the past week or so. Man, I know the feeling. That entire month of February was crazy for me until like last week when I had to freaking start packing. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, so that <laughs> yeah oh I, I did uh pick up orcs must die too because it was Excellent. on a ridiculous sale on steam yes yes and oh, I, I did pick up the expansions that i don't have for that for awesome pennies so yeah so i guess we're gonna play that soon huh yes so do you know anything about it i i've seen screenshots that's about it okay yeah so it's basically like a tower defense game yeah um but you're like a dude, you can go around and interact with crap while the junk is going on. Okay. While everything's hitting the fan, you can run around in the fan. I don't know if that sounds like a good thing to be doing, but it sounds like an interesting thing. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I, I'm interested yeah. in playing it for sure. You know, yeah. uh, Everybody seems to really love that game who plays it. Yeah. Um, it's a good one. Yeah. Uh man, I'm really bummed because I, I I feel like I, there's something else I've at least played a little bit of, but I can't think of anything. It's bad. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so uh, now let's do what I was almost stopping us bef beforehand to do is let's yeah. play let's play our new game. We, we talked about this before the podcast and. Um, yes. Now that I have this green screen, I'm picking like a different picture every uh, time to put back there, um, and I, I still need to uh, fix my settings a little bit because I got a little bit of green hair. It looks like, but uh, say la vie for right now. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna pick like a different background, and I'm not gonna tell Mike what it is, what it is. He can't see me. Like he literally can't see me at all because to make this work, I had to turn my video off in Skype, which is what we're doing for like the conference here, and. Um, so he has no idea what's back here unless he pulls up our Twitch page, which that's cheating, Mike. Don't do it. <laughs> which I have not done. Um, so yeah, all I see of you right now is a very, very pixelated thing of your face. Oh yeah, that's, all that's, metal like. That's like an old picture, old old picture. Yep. Man, I, I gotta change that. <laughs> Um, all right, so I, I guess I'm going to give some hints, or, or uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll let you make a first guess if you want, just like random. Uh, it may or may not. Well, let, let me give you a uh, um, broad first uh, first clue, and then you can make a guess, and then we'll we'll okay. go from there. So the first clue is it's 
a screenshot from a video game. <laughs> it's okay. a, like I said, a broad clue. <laughs> that. Yes. Video games, guys. Yep. You want to guess or you want to give me another clue? <laughs> give me another clue. It, it appears there are there's more than one video game to choose from here. So, this game that it's from, there's a game coming out this year that has the same name as it. Mm-hmm. So that narrows it down it's, a little bit. Is it Doom? Oh, yes! <laughs> Yeah, so it's the it's like a picture of I don't know what stage from what episode, but here let me get out of the way a little bit. It's like it's got like most of the enemies from the game in the picture in at one point or another. Most of the non boring enemies, so it doesn't have like a marine like a you know, the zombie marines or whatever or any imps, mm-hmm. but it's got all the like enemies. So Sweet. Good job. Very nice. <laughs> Which that's that coming was a out very like, good hint. It's coming out like next month, right? I don't know when it's coming out, actually. It's, it's pretty soon, dude. I, I was surprised when I saw the release date. I hadn't heard anything about it until it another like a new picture of it surfaced or something, and they had redone uh, like the color stuff, so it oh, doesn't yeah. look it's not, it, like all yellow, right. <laughs> tinted, whatever. So, um, May 13th. Okay. So I was thinking March because May looks like March. <laughs> but, I did not know it was that soon. Well, oh wait, I can't say April next month. This month is March. We're already in March. What the heck? Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that either. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, man, I am I am pretty stoked to play that game because I love the original Doom. Yeah, Big that fan. that is a good one. Mm-hmm. So excellent. So I so I think that that should be a recurring segment because that would. Uh, so <laughs> the other two I that I was going to choose for tonight were going to be one uh, green emerald or no green what emerald hill zone from Sonic Two like <laughs> the background from that couldn't find one that was sufficiently large although in retrospect it probably would have worked uh, but uh, the other was I, uh, I searched for uh, dead or alive beach that's like all I searched for and of course <laughs> none of the pictures were like uh, you know family friendly i was just hoping to get like the background but i wanted it to be a a background from a video game in particular but i didn't want any of the girls from that game in it so so that's why you said before we started this you needed to close all those pictures of uh girls in bikinis women in bikini yeah i get it now i understand (laughs) yeah i'm actually doing serious there right so um yeah so i'll i'll pick something uh different next time uh last time was uh for reference was the just uh, like a picture like a it was like a rendering because it wasn't from the game I don't think because there was no were no characters in it but like a rendering of uh, the front hall in Resident Evil uh, rem- HD remaster because it was like the higher resolution textures yeah it looked awesome um, so anyway uh, now that that's out of the way let us look at our list so we got a couple other things to talk about what uh, what would you like to move to next um, I would start with this re- this this first one. So I don't. I then w- w- there's probably not much to talk about uh, here. Um, but I was. Um, I, I am a fan of um your various POSIX compliant operating systems and uh, Nixes. Uh, OS ten, yeah, it's all right. But I mean, mainly more like uh, your GNU Linux varieties and FreeBSD and all that jazz. Anyway, I was yeah. just looking at um, distrowatch.com, uh, which is the site I go to pretty frequently, where they have like news on like pretty much any Linux distribution that you can think of. Uh, and yeah. I was looking through the list, uh, or actually I was looking through the news, like so like the, the updates, and there was an update on this one, and I was like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> this, this distribution of Linux is Rebecca Black OS. What what what? <laughs> so, wow. um, I, I know nothing about it uh, other than the the link to its page only goes to a SourceForge uh, page that has the downloads for releases of it. Um, 
And it looks like almost no traffic except for in the past two weeks, which is probably when it got listed on Distro Watch. Um, yeah. <laughs> the only thing I can see about it and understand from what I see here, uh, this is actually on SourceForge. Um, there, there's a big description here, and I'm not about to take my time to read it, but I am going to say the, its subtitle says, Fan Made Rebecca Black OS with Wayland. So, uh, are you familiar, familiar with what Wayland is, Michael? No. So, no. I, I don't want this to devolve into, you know, uh, open source podcast or anything, but uh, do you, you know what X11 is? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, and for those of you listening to the podcast, X11 is... The window, Windows server, windowing server, and not Microsoft Windows, like the literal drawn on the screen windowing Windows. Uh, it's the windowing server for most, uh, or in use with most uh, Linux distributions. Um, and uh, all that means is it's the thing that orchestrates all the things getting drawn on the screen. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it actually doesn't manage them on the screen. It just orchestrates how they get drawn and such. Anyway, it's been it's old software, like '80s old software, um, and yeah. uh, it's really uh, hard to program for. There's it's really hard for drivers to interact with it well. That's why you know graphics drivers in Linux aren't awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, all that to say that Wayland is a modern replacement for X11. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, but there, it has its own quirks, and there there's like 20, 30 years of software that has been developed to work with X11, and most of yeah. it has to be reworked to work with Wayland. So, and, gotcha. anyway, and not that that even matters, not that this is even relevant to what we're doing here, not that it's even relevant to anything other than the fact that this is called Rebecca Black OS is ridiculous, and I don't even know why. I, I can't even find why here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, this uh, <laughs> just because. I mean, why not? Well, yeah, I'm sure that's why. Uh, Zero was put into stasis for a hundred years. Oh, I see. I, uh, so here, yeah. here's here's the thing, and and I, I've been I've I've heard of these others. This is inspired by Linux distributions of the same theme, such as Hannah Montana Linux and Justin Bieber Linux. That have appeared in the Linux community. <laughs> Only this is Rebecca Black OS. <laughs> I see. So there are many native Wayland toolkits and libraries installed. Qt, KDE Framework 5, GT, GTK, EFL, Clutter, and SDL have been compiled. Blah, 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 blah. It's a bunch of techno babble uh, about utilities and Linux that nobody cares about. I should probably say GNU utilities, but whatever. Um. Nothing other than they named it that because somebody has a Hannah Montana Linux, somebody has a Justin Bieber Linux, and apparently the world is in need of Rebecca Black OS. Um, I mean, this is clear, clearly the superior version. Well, I, I, it's limited use, right? I suspect you can only install and use it on Friday. Mm. <laughs> I see what's happened here. Anyway, let's quit talking. I'm not so sure about that. (laughs) Let's quit talking about this. We've given it way more time than it deserves. (laughs) I just wanted to mention that. That's ridiculous. So, um, all right, next topic. Uh, So, I this is just some little thing I wanted to mention too, and and it's little, but it's it's near and dear to our hearts. So I think it's relevant. We've talked a lot about all this stuff. Um, So, uh, Dice Conference was um, what a couple weeks ago at this point. Uh, What is it? Uh, was it? I, th- I think it was a couple of weeks I, ago. I'm yeah. so lost in time right now. I don't even know. What's Dude, going I, on. I, I know. <laughs> the, <laughs> the only way that I, I have referenced that is like two weeks ago was, was that I actually remember it happening. <laughs> right. <laughs> Otherwise, it probably happened last week. Um, right. Anyway, um, maybe it did happen last week. Yeah, whatever. Did it uh, happen last? I don't know. It's possible. I, you know what? I'm I'm screwed in my mind. So, um, <laughs> right. not that that's any different than normal. Uh, anyhow, Dice is like digital interactive and computer entertainment. Mm, I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, anyway, it's like uh, a convention of like trying people. to talk about something we know we don't remember anything about. Right. Oh, I know exactly. <laughs> Maybe it's digital interactive consumer entertainment. I don't whatever. Anyway, it's about like uh, people in the video game industry and, and also crossing over with people in movie industry and other you know entertainment type industries. Um, yeah. It's kind of like a uh, 
entertainment conference for modern media in the sense that it's trying to be inclusive of things like video games where you know like some like film and like tv convention or or, or conference would not include video games it's trying to be like all inclusive of all kinds of media um so it's cool Anyway, one of the keynotes, or I don't know if it was the keynote, but at least one of the keynotes was a just a sitting on a couch discussion uh, with uh, Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro. Of course, this gets everybody up in a, a tizzy, most yeah, especially right. myself, and and I know you yes, too, Mike. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so we're like, oh man, what, are they going to announce something? You know, Kojima has his own studio now. You know, there yep. he's doing his this thing for PlayStation. They're really good friends. Um, and, and and adding to the anticipation of this event, uh, earlier that same week, uh, Hideo Kojima tweets a picture of himself with Norman Reedus out to dinner, <laughs> just kept, quote unquote catching up on stuff. Uh huh. So right. you know, like everybody's just like losing their crap on this. Like what? 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 <laughs> Uh, what's going on here? It's happening. You know, uh, Ron Paul, it's happening. It's, <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so come to the keynote, and, you know, Mike and I actually watched this thing live on Twitch. They, they yeah, streamed yeah. it on Twitch and Hitbox and a bunch of different places. And it was a really cool conversation, man. It's it's really obvious, like, how, you know, pretty good of friends they are and how well they interact with each other and how much they like each yep. other. Um, it was really cool because yeah. they, like, they act like best friends. But they don't even freaking speak the same language. <laughs> right. And, and like, what's really that's funny. That's crazy. And what's really funny is I think uh, that uh, I don't think I've ever seen two huge names in media ever even act, whether or not they are, but just even act like they're that good of friends. You know? Yeah. It yep. seems really genuine. So I it was, oh, yeah. it was cool. Definitely. Um, and I think uh, Guillermo del Toro speaks maybe a little bit of Japanese. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm sure Hideo Kojima speaks a little bit of English. I don't know about Spanish, though. With, yeah. But but anyway, they probably have some very rudimentary communication, I think. But yeah. <laughs> they probably have to have a translator. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, it's funny that, right? And, you know, they're talking about visiting each other's places and, like, being jealous of, like, different, like, you know, memorabilia and toys and stuff that each other has. And it's like, wow, that's that's crazy. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's it's really like a, a one of us conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they didn't say anything about anything else. They didn't say anything about working together other than, you know, that uh uh the moderator, which was the guy who called out Konami at the uh um the game awards thing mm-hmm. whatever ago. Uh he was moderating it and he um he you know called out this article, I forgot who published it, where it was like an interview with Guillermo del Toro where he said, you know, he was done doing video games because, like, it's like uh, anytime he gets involved with it, it's just a sure route to ending the project completely. Um, right. <laughs> he said, he said, yeah, I'm done with video games, but but I'd do anything with my, my friend. And he, you know, <laughs> talking about uh, Kojima, and it was like, yeah. oh, okay, well, here it comes, here it comes. No, no, they didn't say anything about it. Uh, other than they would be happy to work together, um, I, I, they're I, I I really think they're playing a long con. I'm not trying to like hold on to hope like some super fanboy, but I really think they're playing a long con somehow. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah. I <laughs> I just I feel it. I feel like there's something there, but we don't know now. There's still no official word or anything like yep. that. So. Maybe Del Toro's afraid that it's going to get jinxed if he says that I'm working on this game with him. Maybe he's just like yeah. going to wait till like the very last minute. Uh, well, you know what would be oh I man, mean, this would be like the trollingest troll ever is that like they get th- through development like really way in development until they like really start marketing and then they don't yeah. say anything about it's just it's just Kojima's game for PlayStation. That's like all they say about it. And then yep. they get like two months or a month before a release day, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, guys, Guillermo del Toro worked on this too. Oh, by the way, <laughs> right. Norman Reedus worked on this. Oh, by the way, yep. Junji Ito worked on this." And it's like they just name drop all those guys that were supposed <laughs> to have been working on PT. <laughs> I mean, it's just like PT, where I, I mean, all that crap just came out of nowhere if you beat yeah. it, and it just like showed up as this indie-looking thing, yeah, on on PSN, and then all of a sudden, just like bam, 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 bam. 
So that that I I think that would be funny if they did that. I, I at this point I hope they do that. I hope they really just. I'm at a point where I'm okay if it doesn't ever happen. So yeah. if they're gonna do it, I want them to screw with people as much as possible because I know <laughs> other right. people are way more excitable at this point than I am about at least the whole. Oh, I'm gonna die if I don't find out something soon about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> So anyway, I thought that was interesting, but it was definitely uh, it's it was almost like they're seriously trying to troll us. That's how it felt. Yeah, it it was it was a very cool conversation just just to hear them talk, especially talk about like each other's work and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, I that was really cool. Well, and then them also talk about you know stuff that they had watched separately as kids, you know, growing up in different countries. Then they finally yeah. talked to each other and they're like, oh yeah, we both love the same stuff, and it's like crazy. Yeah, because they're not they're no spring chickens. They, you know, I, I, I'm old, but man, they're a little bit older than me. And so it's, right. it's crazy. They grew up in a world completely before the Internet, as, as anybody knows it today. Uh, yep. It's funny that media was able to travel like that because they grew up in very different parts of the world. Yeah, definitely. So awesome. Anything else you want to speak about that, Mike? Negatory. All right, we got one more topic here. Do you you want to do it, or you want to save it for next time? What do you think? Uh, we can go ahead and roll with it. That's fine. It'll probably I, be old news by next time. I yeah, that's true, and I know almost nothing about it. I like read some a little bit, but not much. But go ahead, yeah, I'll let I, you roll. <laughs> yeah, I just, I skimmed over this as well, but um, so apparently, and I mean, you know, as with any new <laughs> console or anything like that, there's always rumors that leak out from the rumor mill and things are swirling around the internet left and right and whatever and um apparently there have been some rumors leaked about nintendo's next console codenamed the nx um that a guy that uh apparently he's reported other things that have been true yeah um i yeah so take that for what that is but um so on destructor they posted this fairly long list just a bullet point list of a bunch of random well bits and, and of to be clear and to be fair for citation purposes he he put this information on neogaf forums right mm. or neogaf i think that's where cuz i think that's i am not sure well either way that, I, I think that's my attempt at uh you know crediting <laughs> yeah it's quite possible um yeah, I'm not going to live read all this junk. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so <laughs> uh, there there are some some interesting things on here. Uh, you know, I, as far as like the Wii U goes, I mean, you know, it's it came out at a very weird time, like kind of like in this transition between quote last gen and quote next gen. Uh, and all that stuff, and so it, Nintendo kind of seems to be on their own life cycle here. Mm. Um, I mean, I, do you remember when the Wii U came out? I don't even remember. Uh, uh, it, I I don't remember. All I know is that I knew I'd heard about it coming out, and then like a week later, I was at Target and I was like, "Oh wow, it's on the shelf. I can buy it right now if I yeah. want." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the Wii U is. I mean, I think it's a great console. I mean, it has you know a, a very quality library. You know, it's. I mean, of course, there's shuffleware as with anything else, yeah. but there's the especially the first party games are just every single one of them is just like hit, 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 hit. Yeah, hit, I hit, mean, hit. I bought it for Mario Maker and Bayonetta two. I've still not played Bayonetta two, and it's worth it for Mario Maker. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, it's I. I even if you know the thing only has like another year or so, I mean, I would highly recommend it, especially if the price keeps on going down on it. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, Wii U came out. You know, it same kind of deal with the 3DS, where the 3DS came out and there were no games for it. None of the games were good, and everyone was like, "What the frig is this thing? <laughs> it costs two hundred seventy-five dollars, and you can't play any good games on it." And so it just kind of like sat around for two years on the shelves until some good games came out. Uh, and so, you know, kind of the same thing happened with the Wii U. It just, I mean, I don't even know what came out Wii U's first year of existence. Zombie but, uh, U. Yeah, that. Um, 
I think, uh, and I just want to interject a little bit here. Um, I think that vi- uh, Nintendo was a victim of two things. One, uh, the naming was bad, bad, bad. Oh yeah. Because like, is I, this the new version of the Wii? like the the Wii? Like, is it a, a, yep. an improved Wii or is it an actual new console when it was actually a new console? Um, yep. That and I think the reason that they brought it out when they did, like this whole, you know, on their own cycle, like you're saying, is because they're trying, I think, capture two audiences, right? Uh, I'm, I was off, off my camera, I gotta move out of here. Two audiences. The, uh, um, the, uh, adopters of uh, the Wii who weren't traditional uh, video game market they were hoping yeah. that they would go ahead and buy the next console the problem with that was that they're, those are mo- the people who are most likely to mistake it as the same thing that they already have because it's called Wii right. uh, and then yep. two uh, the uh, the people who are trying to jump on the early wave of all the next consoles the problem is that uh, Nintendo not releasing with a Mario title, not releasing with a Zelda title, not releasing with Metroid title, not releasing with the Kirby title, not releasing with Yoshi title, not releasing with you know any yep. of these first party titles. Nobody's going to do that. I mean, it, yep. it, you're not you're not a PlayStation, you're not an Xbox. Where uh, yeah, we know the good Nintendo titles are coming, but PlayStation, and Xbox, they're going to release with something you're going to want to play, like ninety yeah. percent of the time. Yep, exactly. Anyway, sorry, that's all. Uh, and I mean that—that's kind of what happened with the 3DS. Is you know, it came out, it launched with a Pilot Wings game, <laughs> uh, Street Fighter Four, and something else that I can't remember. That I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> uh, I think it was one of those like it came out with three launch titles, and that was it. Yeah. Um, not a whole lot of magic to choose from, but. Uh, so anyway, you know, needless to say, it took quite a while for the Wii U to get off the ground, um, and I mean, st- people still bash it left and right, uh, but you know, it's I, at this point that I, that's that's uncalled for, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I you know, a lot of people are saying Dreamcast too, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah, the Dreamcast was around for two years, which yeah, but uh, that's is they abysmal. Mean- here, here's the but, thing, though. That to even even take that statement, I mean, it's still kind of a compliment because Dreamcast was an awesome console. Oh yeah, I, right? and that was that was the thing is like the Dreamcast launched with phenomenal games. I mean, it was just yeah. it also came out at a weird time right. and was overshadowed by the PS2 and all that stuff. Yeah. And so you know that whole transition plus third party publishers not trusting Sega for you know. 32x Sega CD Saturn all happening well, within yeah. like two years of each other. <laughs> How can you blame them? I guess right, <laughs> and all that junk. Um, but yeah, so so anyway. Sorry. sorry. Um, what were we talking about? The NX. That's right. Oh talking. yeah. Okay. Not even. We weren't even talking about the Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> we could make a whole topic just rambling on about the Wii U. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So Nintendo has been talking about, or well. They haven't really been talking about it, but there's been leaked information over, I mean, really since a little before last E3 about their next console codenamed the NX. Uh, And there's been some stuff that's been surfacing. um, For one, aside from this article that that I saw yesterday or whenever it was, uh, they, uh, they filed a patent for some kind of like handheld controller, kind of like the, the Wii U gamepad. But the the whole face of the controller is a screen, um, but it actually has physical thumbsticks on it that come out of the screen. Um, Whoa! I didn't read that part of it. I yeah, it, th- this wasn't on this article. I saw this like oh, maybe a okay. month ago or something. Um, apparently, I didn't show you this. I I I just like looked at. it. I was like, oh, that's cool. Then moved on with my life. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it looks kind of like um, you know, it has like the uh whatever these are the hand grippy things gripper the, dooter the, gri- the gripple bobbles the gripper bobbles and then it has uh like this whole area is a screen it's like an an oval oh and oh has, yeah i saw that i saw that the yeah, oval. Okay. yeah 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 and it has two thumbsticks coming out of the sides of the screen right um so you know whatever it was just a patent so that, i mean that stuff just happens and it just yeah that's that there's like uh, billions of things patented that nobody's ever even tried to build yeah but so i thought that looked pretty cool um something i've never seen before uh but like side note 
complete side note because we're just going on tangents here. <laughs> why not? That was like, what? I said, why not? <laughs> You're right. One of my favorite things about the Dreamcast was the VMU and having a like screen on the controller. So I've always thought like the whole screen on the controller thing was a pretty cool idea. And then the Wii U kind of took that to the next level. So like, you know, the NX having like the controller is a freaking screen. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, so uh, to this article, um, so all the, it's just like a bullet point list of a bunch of different things. But um, first one is the NX has a wireless HDMI dongle that attaches flush to the back of the device. You can pull it out and insert it into any display with a normal sized HDMI output. Yeah, so I, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that because it, I so it's um, like a um uh crap. In home streaming, it, 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 the streaming like it does from console to the uh the Wii U does to the pad. It's like that to yeah, the TV now. That's actually the next point. It says NX uses an evolved version of the Wii U streaming technology to display in HD on the TV screen. Yeah. Um so I don't know, that kind of might mean that this is like a portable console that you actually hook up to the TV. Like there's no actual like box that you put under the TV and plug in all the cables or whatever. I mean... Oh, so like the controller is the console. I don't know. That's just kind of what I got oh, from that. Oh, that's interesting. So I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like some of the power specs that they talk about later, like it, that seems hard for me to believe. But maybe, man, that would be awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, I who knows? I right. <laughs> you know. Um again, it could, you know, it could have some like hub device or something like that, which I guess that would oh, probably yeah. make more sense then. Um so, let's see what. So, analog controls for movement have small motors in them for full haptic feedback. If you right. control a character and hit a wall, the sticks move away from the wall to simulate hitting it. Um So that's one of the that's like an ultra gimmicky thing that I think can be really cool or just like stupid. Right. <laughs> um which I had did you ever have a a, a Microsoft the Sidewinder? No, but joystick? I've used them. Okay, so they had a version of the Sidewinder that had this kind of force feedback in it. Yeah. Um, and I had one of these at one point back many, many moons ago. <laughs> um, and it's, it was the demo software it came with was sweet. Like you could click on all these different, uh, kind of like a soundboard or something. You could click on the, all these different things mm -hmm. and it would do all these different kind of force feedback deals like like a machine gun, you really feel oh, yeah. like it wouldn't just like vibrate. It would right. like feel like it's actually jolting or something yeah, like yeah. that. Or like one was a lightsaber. It would feel like kind of magnetic or something as you would like move it around. Um, or like a chainsaw, you can move it around. It actually felt like you know, it was like idling or something. It, you know, just like yeah. little things like that. Yeah. Um, but in terms of actually being implemented in games... I never played a single game with this thing that <laughs> actually used it correctly. Yeah, it's like who who programs for it, and like how do you like, especially something like the Sidewinder? It's like, okay, am I really gonna make my game to have to program with the drivers of one specific controller that like maybe point yep. oh oh one percent of the people who play my yes. game <laughs> will be using exactly. I, I a pretty expensive joystick, nonetheless. Right. Like I don't, I don't remember how much it was, but I cannot imagine at all it was cheap. Right. Um, so yeah, that's cool, but uh, I'm sure that takes some programming skill to be able to do that. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I mean, you know, it's a rumor anyway. So, um, let's see. Bluetooth sync with tons of devices, including smartphones and tablets. You can answer phone calls and display text messages from your phone onto the NX screen. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Seems like that's where things are going to go anyway. Yeah. Connectivity to your other devices and just, you know, ecosystem. Internet of things. Internet of things. That's, yes. the, that's the term. That's literally the term. Right. It, it is. Actually. Yeah. That's what's funny. Um, it's like fun. <laughs> closest in terms of hardware spec to the Xbox One. Um, Again, this is interesting because it's like, you know, this is coming out after all the Xbox One, PS4 and everything. So it's like, you know, why wouldn't this be more powerful? Right. But at the same time, it's always seemed like Nintendo's kind of been on their own game plan to begin with. Yeah. And, you know, like the Wii, I mean, you know, 
we can do past 480i or 480p or whatever, but it, um, you know, oh, yeah. it was extremely successful. Sure. Um, as compared to the 360 and all that. Well, I mean, in, um, in, in the end, everyone wants to talk about specs, but it's like power is nothing. Software is everything. Yep, exactly. I mean, especially when I every single console in the past, when it has launched, the games look one way, and then when that console is about to be put to rest, the yeah. games look phenomenal compared to what it's, they look like. It's with, so with nuts, too. And yeah. I, this, this is most apparent to me in PS2. Uh, Cause I got oh yeah yeah a PS2 near launch, and what what's even ri- more ridiculous about it is even at launch or near launch with PS2, uh, one of the games that my brother and I got were was the Madden game that came out, um, uh-huh. and because he liked playing football, uh, and I like playing football video games. I even still do. I think they're fun. Uh, I don't even really like football, but I like playing football video games. Exactly, uh, it's funny. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we were, we played that, and it's like the like little cutscenes between plays, or like show like you know the players and stuff, and it's like man, this looks so good. And oh, it's like yeah. you compare it to like the end of the PS2, like like the very yep. end. It's like it's it looks terrible, like absolute yeah. trash, terrible. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's funny. Um, like even the Dreamcast, I mean, you look at a lot of the games that launched with. Um, they're all, you know, 30 frames per second, whatever. Yeah. They look one way. And then fast forward, just like a year later, yeah. all the games are running at 60 frames per second and they just look just ridiculous compared to what happened a year before. Right. Um, so yeah, hardware guys. Um, Let's see. I'm not going to read all of these. Any game that can run on the PS4 or Xbox One can easily run on the NX with near zero modifications. I think that that's cool. That's, that's the biggest important. point of all of this stuff to me is that yes. it may make it easy for developers to put software on all platforms. So if yes. I can write you know, one code base and have to make 5% changes to have another deploy target, man, I'm, I'm going to make those 5% changes just to potentially yep. get to grab that market yep exactly um like the saturn i think one of aside from i mean many of the different things that you know we're not good about it as far as you know when it when it came out but um it it had apparently is very difficult to program for extremely difficult compared to the 64 and the playstation so you know i mean it did not and and especially with uh, everything else all the Sega factors, all that kind of stuff right. that was going on with everything else. You know, nobody wanted to program for it because it was just it was more difficult to make games for. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's extremely important. Um, blah blah blah, <laughs> blah blah blah, blah blah blah. One third party dev says it's the easiest device we've ever developed for. You just take your code, compile it, and it works. What's funny is uh, an almost identical quotation was attributed to a developer on the release or before the release of the Wii U or before even the, the reveal of the Wii U when do you remember that where that, there was like this like slideshow leaked um, yeah, uh, like, yeah, uh, for like dev that. consumption of, on the Wii U and it was like no this mm-hmm. is seriously it's it's this powerful machine blah blah this and it's yep. so easy and it's like I mean like literally I think that it was almost like the same quotation <laughs> speaking of Wii U development um I don't remember what convention this was. Maybe it was the Portland Retro Gaming Convention. Um, what one of those? Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was the one in Texas, the one the Retro Police. Anyway, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was at a retro gaming convention. Yeah. Uh, you know, they have a room full of vendors and whatever, uh, like they do at any convention. But at these, they sell retro video games and memorabilia and stuff like that. And some guy had a Wii U development kit uh, that. Apparently, I mean, nobody there had ever seen this before. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, they're hard to get. You yeah. We developer to get one. Um, but it was pretty cool. Like it had video out on the gamepad and stuff like that. Just a bunch that's, of different. That's cool. Extra stuff like that. He traded just a ridiculous amount of stuff to get this thing. <laughs> he, he pretty much said. He like made an announcement to the entire room. Whoever wants this, just make me some offers. And some guy came up to him and was like, "You can have my whole table if I can have that." <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that's um, awesome. 
Anyway, so uh, operating system named Nintendo S <laughs> is, is very powerful and has so many modern features of mobile operating systems. Um, Nintendo is trying to be very careful in showing it off for fear that it will be mistaken as running Android. So very are, strong are, networking are, functions. Are you saying that we programmed this with Java? I, I mean, I, <laughs> I may, don't know. I, may I, I be I, the I, first candidate to say, let's just shoot it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, Oh, I, I leaned yeah. down to talk to my microphone. I should bring the microphone up when I do that. <laughs> kill it now. If it has Java, if it's Java, kill it now. I'm sorry. There's oh, there's all great. kinds of like developers like, why? Man, Java's great. Put it. You can put it on your toaster. <laughs> I literally have no idea what you just said because it just clipped oh, like sorry. crazy. <laughs> and it sounded like you were a distorted guitar being very I said, metal. I said you can put it, it on cool. you can put it on your toaster. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Java is the future of software development. Uh huh. Yeah. Change or die. It, <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I'm, um, I'm going to stop now. So yeah, that that's about all. Um, a bunch of interesting things. So uh, we'll see where all that goes. If anything isn't, I mean, nobody nobody really knows any solid information on this. Just a bunch of yeah. random leaked quote-unquote rumors and stuff like that. Um, people are saying that it might launch this year. It might launch next year. Um, yeah, that what? they may have pushed Dude, the it, Zelda Wii U game back yeah, yeah, to that, launch with this or something, you know. Uh, 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 I'm going to throw a riot, my one-man riot, if they do not release a Zelda game for Wii U. I'm going to be pissed off, dude. You know, I have a feeling that they might do what they did with the Wii and the GameCube and release, like, Twilight Princess came out for both. That's so stupid. Um, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Man. So, yeah. I... Mm, unless... Th th there's, o there's one way... There's only one way they're going to get me to buy the Nintendo NX or whatever they call it. Because that's not what they're going to call it when they release it. The 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 Nintendo... It's going to be called 3. T-H-R-I-I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's brilliant. You should go ahead and <laughs> register that domain right now. I uh, know, right? <laughs> but uh, um, there's only one way that they're going to get me to buy it. And that's if they bring out Bayonetta 3 on it. Yep, I mean that's why I bought the I mean, Wii U. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you know, like I don't even, I don't even want Mario Maker two. I don't care. I don't, I don't care Zelda Maker. Well, that's not true. If they do Zelda Maker and it's like old school Zelda dungeons, I'm, I'm, I'm totally buying That'd that. That'd be nuts. That'd Dude. be nuts. If, if they, if you could get online and you know download other people's Zelda levels, that would be oh, just. Yeah another level of weirdness <laughs> well have you seen like that retro gaming tv or live tv um channel i think it's retro gaming live tv twitch channel that does 24 7 retro gaming like every yeah. i think thursday night and sometimes like sunday um they have like a four-way zelda randomizer race where they they pick a, a like a seed that randomizes like the location of items and stuff Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like four people who like, they've never played that before, like all that location. Uh -huh. So they have to play, play through it to find all the stuff and get through the game and beat it. So it's Sweet. really cool to watch. It's it's uh, frustrating, I can imagine, to play it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even imagine. That's pretty cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. So, But yeah, anyway, I, I, nah, I'm, I'm not super interested at the moment. In Nintendo, I mean, I've got, I, I just got the Wii U and the PS4, so it's like yeah. I've got lots of stuff to be playing. I don't know. I have so many games in my backlog right now. It's just like the last thing I need is a new console. Yeah. That's, I don't know. Um, I yeah, I'm I'm really over the whole buying a console at launch thing. Um, I mean, I bought a PS4 at launch. Uh, just because I had the money at the time and I knew I wasn't going to have it around the time that I actually wanted to buy one, so I just went ahead and bought it. And I didn't really play much on it for like a little under a year yeah. until I started really getting games for it that I, you know, really wanted to play. Um, so well, that was a good decision. Yeah, uh, which I'm I'm very very glad I have one now. Um, and I, around the time I would have bought one, I wouldn't have had the money to get one. So, so yeah. 
Yeah, and it goes that way sometimes. And now, yep. like, I bought two consoles in the past, what, six months? No, four months, five months? And now mm. I, have, I have no money to buy anything forever. Right. <laughs> forever. <laughs> but uh, So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, if, if it launches with something phenomenal, then, I mean, I'm just... I'll just, you know, start selling lemonade on the corner or something. But I don't know. <laughs> oh, man, that's fun. I don't know. I could just imagine you down there on uh, on the, the big road next to your house, like, with a lemonade stand and, like, all this traffic just, like, <laughs> flying by. Right. <laughs> At 100 miles an hour. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yep. All right, man. Well, anything else you want to say before we get out of here? I don't think so. I think that's about all she wrote. Awesome. So, uh, I'll do the final plugs. We are a band! We are Order of Tear is, if you couldn't see, oh no, that way, uh, over there. Uh, that's that's our logo, see? And you can go to our website, it's down below, videogamemetal.com. That will take you to our Bandcamp page. We also have a SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash videogamemetal. But everywhere else on the internet, we're at slash Order of Tear. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Vine. I'm missing one. YouTube, that's the one. YouTube, how could we forget YouTube <laughs> and Twitch? Here, Twitch, obviously. did you say? Yes. Well, yes. We're, we're here on Twitch, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, but I mean, I mean, it's gonna be on. It's gonna be on YouTube. So, and I, I just knocked the crap out of my mic, so it probably sounded wonderful. So check Live us out. Live production. All it's, the internets. It is highly rewarding, but highly risky. We have been awarded zero internet points tonight. Uh, we in fact have been deducted from our uh, lifetime total of two internets. We now right. <laughs> only have one internet to our band's name. Exactly. Uh, but when we eventually do pull off one of these live and it's excellent, then we were going to feel great, and we're just going to walk around in our walk around in our limos. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to walk around in our limos because we're going to have transforming limos. And then we'll have uh, at least, at least four internets. Yes, four internets at that point in time. But uh, until then, we are what we are. So uh, thank you so much for checking out our podcast. Uh, we do this every other week uh, live on Twitch. We'll put it on YouTube as well. So uh, thanks for checking it out. That guy across the internet joining me through the series of tubes is Mike the Hammer K. Kludzinski. I'm the Game Mage. We'll see you guys next time. Mm. Goodbye, internet. <laughs> <laughs>